Welcome along to the Omni Stage of Event Tech Live USA Canada 21 and to our first session of day three on the Omni Stage, Story of a Colour. I'm delighted to say that joining us now is Manager of Global Events and Amplification Campaigns at Open Text. Sonali Nair now joins Event Tech Live. Sonali, it's a pleasure to see you. Welcome to Event Tech Live. Thank you for having me here, James. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us at Event Tech Live. It's great to be speaking with you all today. So, Sonali, topic... I'm going to hand straight over to you to kick off your session. Awesome. Thank you so much. So topic of the session is story of a color and for a reason. I have lived many years of my life as a diversity metric, starting with my early education. Diverse on how I looked, the language I spoke, food habits and spiritual beliefs. I often found myself on the pedestal following and accepting unique rules of engagement, which made me feel exclusive, exclusive of not being able to voice my opinion or participate in open discussions. However, there was one day in an entire year that I always looked forward to attend, where I was free to participate, to dress up, to dress up like myself, to be crazy and to be heard, our school's annual festival. That one event slowly and gradually empowered me to make friends, to be seen and heard, eventually to being one of the top achievers of my school. What 2000 students and 50 teachers collectively couldn't do, one event made it possible, only because it celebrated inclusivity and cultivated a sense of belonging. That is the power of inclusive events. Time for an icebreaker question. I have an event invitation for you all for world's largest, most awesome event of the year. And it will be delivered in a beautiful foreign language. Now, let me know in the chat who would like to join me. Now, if you must decide, how promising this event sounds right now. It claims to be an awesome event. Now, tell me again which event doesn't. It says foreign language. Well, I speak English, Hindi, and an awful bit of Kasashanu, so better be one of these. Confused? Doesn't make sense, right? The emotion you experienced with this quote unquote, exclusive event invitation um, is exactly how our peers feel when they receive numerous event invites with no information on assistive features. While it has taken our inclusive leaders over half a century um, to empower us in having this conversation, we still have a long way to go. And complacency is one thing we cannot afford. Efforts around inclusion in events have recently been increasing, and part of this is ensuring event accessibility. Now, people living with disabilities are often neglected when large shifts happen, and they were certainly not at the forefront of the industry's discussions when it came to transition to a virtual world. That being said, um, virtual events are naturally more inclusive than in-person events in, in many respects. For example, um, they tend to be more affordable and don't require any travel. And many organizations have leveraged higher attendance rates throughout the past year as a result. However, we're still lagging when it comes to including deaf and blind participants or those with learning disabilities, and they still a lot of things planners can do to make them more accessible. The step to taking inclusivity from being a lip service um, or a verbal promise to an actual execution is by making it a substantial part of your event strategy. When something becomes a part of strategy, it becomes measurable and tangible. We're able to define its metrics um, and KPIs, which do not slip through cracks in a contingency situation. Anything that is not in your strategy is not long-term. 
making your inclusion goals is part of your overarching strategy will not only help in getting exec um, getting executive buy-ins but also it will make your events immune to budget constraints providing assistive tech features during a virtual event is not an option or a good to have element it is a must have which is critical to your events to your attendees and to your organization's success over the past year and a half um, i studied watched and predicted some of the events and their performance to identify what makes some events different from others like mpi's wec or um, the event adobe experience feed loop change makers many more the reason behind the success wasn't just social media engagement or digital advertising or content or the platform. It was a sense of belonging, inclusivity, a collective effort right from the promotions to registrations to attendance. These events, in my perspective, did not just focus on diversity. While diversity in events embraces differences, inclusivity is what makes it a success. And this predicament has been put perfectly by um, one of was, you know, greatest inclusive leaders, Verna Myers, that diversity is being invited to a party, whereas inclusion is being asked to dance. Now, there are three aspects to creating inclusive experiences, breaking the barriers of unconscious bias, Unconscious bias is how we feel and react in our minds, whereas inclusion and exclusion is what we, meet, what we make others feel with our actions. And over the past 12 years of being an events professional, I have seen the halo and horn effect being the primary driver of unconscious bias. When event organizers ask for post-event feedback and they see a couple of attendees responding to accessibility questions, they see, you know, they see those responses with a halo effect and feel that their efforts are complete and nothing more is required. On the other hand, when organizers do see a critical feedback from one attendee suggesting assistive features beyond closed captioning, they see that with a horn effect which raises questions like budget constraints or scalability. What they do miss is a great opportunity of including a wider pool of audience, perspective, and business that is choosing some other event over yours because of lack of empathy and exclusivity. But how do we break the unconscious bias? Well, there are two solution paths, um, empathy in perspective and empathy in shared goals. Now, basic definition of perspective is the unique angle or direction in which one perceives and looks at an object or a situation. So as the image depicts, what one person might read as number nine might appear as number six to the other. Making both of them prone to being right and wrong, depending on who you ask. Inclusivity starts with recognizing barriers and taking one step towards fixing it with empathy. I remember reading this quote in one of um, Brené Brown's book on empathy that states, sympathy creates separation, whereas empathy makes connection. So when you see someone stuck on the road and you say, oh, I'm so sorry to see you in this situation, that's sympathy. But when you say, let me stay here with you right now until we figure out some help and get you out of here, that's empathy. Asking for pronouns during registrations might not make a huge difference to a cisgendered in individual, but for someone who isn't, makes all about being heard, be, to be seen and to be accounted for. Shared and unified goals, in my perspective, are a force that brings and holds people together. 
There is a reason you want to invite these attendees to your event. Embrace that reason. Let them bring diverse perspective. The moment we align our event goals with attendee experience, we are taking one step forward in creating that sense of belonging. Before moving forward with the event planning, planners must measure the events on att uh, the effects on attendee acquisition, its diversity as you make critical event planning decisions. Who's your target audience? Beyond the list and database. Evaluate your event goals and their impact upon your DEI strategies. Consider who's in the room when you're making those critical decisions. Are the decision makers you have in the room diverse in perspective? How has your target audience been engaging with your content, with your speakers and events in the past? Answers to these questions will help you design an attendee persona that considers different perspectives, opinions, and learning curves. Engage with a diverse organizing committee, both internally and externally. Together, we can look for opportunities and flag possible blind spots. For instance, when choosing an event date, consider religious and cultural holidays that may conflict, um, including live captioning and translations are the bare essentials in making an event inclusive. However, for pre-recorded or on-demand sessions, make sure to manually check the captioning. Include speakers with inclusive perspectives. Too often, I see the same faces presenting at events and typically they say the same things. A diverse panel will present new ideas and provoke more thoughts. Not having a diverse team will lead to exhaustion for the planning committee and the attendees because unless we have someone in our team to explain the critical nature of an event element, it is very easy for us to overlook those elements. If you don't have a diverse planning committee, hire a contingent worker that represents those diverse groups or hire an inclusive event strategist and consultant. Consultants can help committees develop an inclusivity guide that can be a rinse and repeat for more than one event. Partner with diverse vendors, suppliers, service providers who will help in breaking the knowledge barriers and in many cases give advice on more collaborative experience. When you have a diverse representation um, from internal stakeholders, your audience, you have a greater opportunity of executing content and thought diversity. Content crowdsourcing is another great way of giving your audience the event canvas to let them shape and design the event content and own the experience. Creating a task force or a panel discussion, um, pre-event pre design surveys to learn what matters to them most, what they want to learn. The more engaged your attendees are in crafting their event experience, it is more likely for them to attend and engage with your brand. Choose your technology that aligns with your event accessibility. Your tech stack is the foundational building block of your inclusive event experience. Choose your event technology based off of your event strategy and not the other way around. Events are a place for connections, stories, and conversations. That's the first reason why anyone wants to attend an event. Let's not break that bridge of human connection and dialogue just because we're in a virtual um, environment and we want to grasp every living minute of attendees to mark them high on our lead scoring calculators. Our attendees are more than lead counts and data points. Events are the entry points of your brand experience. So it's important 
you give them enough so they come back for more. As events and marketing professional, we're in a unique position to change the world by seeing the value of bringing people together intentionally, creating a culture of belonging and promoting authenticity and equity. So with that, um, we will go ahead and take some time um, for questions and conversations. Sonali, thank you very much for uh, for that session. And it's great to hear somebody talk so eloquently. We we obviously have a lot of long PowerPoint presentations and videos and things being exchanged it over the last three days. Um, it was lovely to actually just sit back and listen to you speak um, so eloquently about the subject. And uh, if you've still got a few moments available to us today, we'd like to put some questions to you that uh, have been submitted while you've been speaking. Um, first of all, do you have any tips that you could offer the audience um, to encourage pro pronoun use in the event environment. If somebody doesn't provide theirs, how do you acknowledge without assuming pronouns? So the best way to handle that situation is using gender neutral titles. Like um, instead of Mr. Miss, Mrs, we can use MX. That keeps their privacy intact while making sure that we are still extending a safe environment for them because the more and more organizations and events extend that safer option and safer environment, people will connect with us eventually. Is it naive to suggest that we don't need them at all? Um, it, does it have any relevance to the sort of data that an event organizer needs to actually collect now? If we have the person's first name and their surname, is, is that all we really need? Do we need pronouns? We need pronouns to connect with them at a human level. Before being a data point, they are humans, they are our attendees, they're connecting with a brand, they are attending our event for a reason. And we need to keep that reason the primary purpose. Without navigating from, uh, from that purpose, we need to create a more safer environment so that um, nobody's judging them and nobody's questioning them if they want to provide their title, if they want to provide their pronoun or not. It's, Absolutely. you know, over everything, it's just a matter of empathy. Of course. Um, if we go to our next question, um, somebody would like to know what are some ways to elicit attendee feedback for accessibility that makes them feel safe to provide but not pressured? Absolutely. That's a very great question um, because I feel that feedback for most of the times, you know, it's customary um, and we do receive feedback and we do give feedback, but we feel that maybe somebody is not listening to that feedback, but I highly re um, you know, recommend and encourage attendees to provide as detailed feedback as they can provide because the more feedback we provide as if you have an option, go anonymous but do provide your feedback on the accessibility, the level of assistive features you need, because um, the, the help I will get with, let's say, closed captioning might not be same to you. For instance, my mom, um, she has partial hearing impairment, but she would not admit to it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you give her closed captioning, she would take it and you know she, she would be very happy with that. So accessibility means different to everyone. Inclusivity being, means different to everyone. And giving feedback, being explicit about that feedback is important to create that conversation and keep it going. Absolutely, thank you very much. And uh, finally, um, do you have any favorite or top inclusivity apps, tech solutions for color blindness or other accessibility issues that may be overlooked in the bigger scheme of ADA? Um, at this point, I don't have a favorite um, because we're just starting with accessibility and assistive features. We're not there yet. For instance, Zoom recently launched um, the live transcription feature um, for their paid plans. And there are a lot of tools like Interprefy 
who are doing a great job in interpreting, uh, you know, uh, live sessions and, and on-demand keynotes. But I agree that they're not there yet, but at least mm -hmm. we're starting off with something. And that's why it's important to continue the conversation more and more on all the platforms, on all channels, and share that feedback with those technical uh, technology organizations, because the more we ask, the more pressure they have to do better and give us better um, assistive features for, for our attendees. Because even one attendee who needs that feature should be accounted for when they attend the event. Absolutely. Sonali, thank you very much. Before we wrap up, just some comments as well that have been posted in the group chat in the Event Tech Live platform. Um, somebody's commented a very interesting talk. Thank you very much for delivering it. Um, and I'm sure you'd be keen to hear where some of our attendees have been listening to you and watching you from today. We've got Toronto, we've got Orlando, Florida, London, England, all been watching the session today, Sonali. It's been a pleasure to have you at Event Tech Live. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your session today, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure being here with you.